Well, after a two-part series on deploying Office 365, let's go back that stuff up now. Welcome to another video from TD Sheridan Lab. Previously, to kick off this channel, I went and stood up Office 365, brand new for tdsheridanlab.com. Now that it's been up and running for a week and we decided we're going to keep it, we should probably back it up. Generally, when it comes to Office 365, I prefer two products, depending upon the application and the surrounding variables. One is a Synology Active Backup for Office 365, and the second is Veeam's Backup for Office 365. This video will be completely about the Synology Backup, how to configure it, and some general advice at the end for to pick the right parts for it. Let's get started. All right, let's get some backup configured for TD Sheridan Lab. So, uh, as a starting point, all I have done so far is gone to my Synology NAS and installed the Active Backup for Office 365 package. So, just making it available, and then I opened it, which brings you to this screen. It asks you where your Office 365 is located. So, nine times out of 10, you're just going to go with this first option here of Office 365. If you are in Germany or if you are in China, you will choose the other two options and click Next. So I am going to go and use the admin account. So if I make more, more mailboxes in the future, I don't have to mess with permissions. And since we are configuring OAuth, uh, for authentication. Let's do it at the top level instead of tied to my individual user login. Just for a point of clarity on here, uh, on the original screen, it says, hold on. On here it says Microsoft 365 OAuth authorization. It's going to be a little confusing because the protocol is technically OAuth. It allows for two-factor authentication and single sign-in and all that stuff. Microsoft, in their infinite wisdom, in all of their documentation, they have renamed that as modern authentication. So OAuth and modern authentication are basically interchangeable in the Microsoft world. So you can see here, logged into the admin account, so I can grant the OAuth service on the Synology. All of these permissions make sense. It needs to be able to read and write everything that's backing up or restore. So we'll go ahead and click accept. Let's give it a name. Lab. Back up. Destination share. Oop. Let's just do that one. If you only want to back up certain accounts, you can, you know, or just email versus archive, or contacts, you know, click and choose what you want or don't want. Realistically, you know, it, this is an archive backup, so generally you want to archive everything in this type of situation. So, I'm just going to leave the default as is. If you create new users, you don't have to come back in here and add them to the job. And one thing to point out right now is Synology Backup for Office 365 supports basically everything in Exchange, so mail, contact, calendars, and OneDrive. It currently does not support SharePoint, but that is in beta right now. So if you need to back up SharePoint, it will be soon. I don't foresee it taking that long because this does support OneDrive and the back end for OneDrive is SharePoint. So it's one of those just kind of taking it that next step in their backup software to have that all work. And let's take a look at this one and I'll check box that just in case this grows and I want to allow users to log into the Synology to do their own restores. In this case it doesn't matter because it's just me but from a business perspective you may want this or you may not. It kind of just depends what the company's current IT setup is and permissions and roles all that fun stuff. Click next. Alrighty, so we can run this continuously, we can do it manually, we can schedule it. I'm gonna schedule it because I don't get that much email, so I don't need this to run 
all the time so first run put this run at midnight every day just capture all the daily change and we'll click next before i continue on if we want to treat this like a traditional backup you can say how long you want to hold stuff for generally with office 365 because it's in the cloud kind of throw your general backup retention scheme out the window because of some of the advantages of office 365 in the longer recovery periods and that type of a thing all on-site backup for it is basically email archiving so you're going to want to hold it for a longer period of time or indefinitely so i'm just going to say keep everything next give you a little summary here and apply let's run the backup now so this is queuing it all up while that's thinking here and downloading right now let's take a quick peek at my OneDrive so as you can see I got an ISO in here an empty folder or a single document so there is some stuff in here to back up not much but like I threw the ISO in here as an example but right now it has found the two user accounts which is the admin account and my account and is processing all of that right now and it's processing me I don't have that much email in there so it shouldn't take too long got the first half configured of backing it up Let's say I accidentally deleted this Ubuntu Live CD and it was super important. So instead of just re-downloading it, I need to recover it. Like let's just say it was a presentation or something like that. That was super important and I spent tens or of hours just building up this huge presentation. Go into Synology and hit the active backup portal. So by default, brings us to the administrator root view which because it's just basically a service account it has nothing so let's change that to me click open and by default it brings us to the OneDrive view which is fine it shows that this ISO is here and select it and click restore and if you were sharing this file with other people from your OneDrive then you could restore the permissions too I wasn't so we can watch this go Basically, it's going to go and upload this back to Office 365. And I probably should have chose a smaller file for this, but oh well, it's moving right along. But just for sake of brevity, I will pause this until it is complete since it is almost a gig in size. After five minutes, it restored the entire 800 meg ISO image back up to my OneDrive account. So if we go over here, it's in this restored folder which then in turn I can just move it to where it was beforehand alright so let's close this out and now let's just say oh hey I had to restore a bunch of emails I skipped or something you just go up here change it to the mail icon and as you can see here we got my inbox got some purchases that I've done for this channel all the fun stuff so but yeah it's just same process restore or if you need to export them you can export them too and that pretty much wraps up how you do active backup for office 365 on a Synology Lastly, before we uh, close on this video here, I want to go through just some of the good practice or, or technical pieces of doing this. With Synology, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you buy a Synology NAS, slap in some hard drives, and away you go. So with this one, because it's a Synology, right off the bat, it's a cheaper device than buying a dedicated server. So realistically, you just kind of got to gauge how much space you're going to need, and then and theory how much space are you going to need for the next five years especially if you're doing this as a archive and line of business stuff you should line your technology refresh policies with warranties and that type of a thing so that brings me to my first point of using one of the plus series or higher Synology units 
the plus series is basically their fancy way of saying the business units they include a five-year warranty on them so then if something happens to the unit you just rma it once you get the new unit in put in your hard drives and you should be good to go the one that i'm using at home is the ds918 plus it works very well for backups and plex and general file sharing as well but if you got a larger organization you can get the ones with the bigger drive bays or uh they do allow for expandability into their expansion units over eSATA. Next, you just gotta gauge how much storage you're gonna need, so that's why I had this pulled up. So right here, I'm using a whole whopping 17 megabytes in my mailbox, plus my OneDrive is roughly at about a gig right now because that ISO file. Uh, there is PowerShell commands that you can use to gauge how big your Office 365 presence is because they do give you the lofty high amounts like business essentials i can have a 50 gigabyte mailbox one terabyte of OneDrive space if you're on business premium or higher then your mailbox can be 100 gigs in size if you have archive mailboxes etc so it's going to add up but can pull all that information times it by how many users account for growth and then buy the corresponding hard drives to put into the Synology. Just like any type of storage solution, you don't want to use RAID 0, at least do RAID 1 or RAID 5 with a hot spare to account for drive failures. Luckily, because this is just a backup for Office 365, you're mainly going to get hamstringed by your internet connection. So there isn't too many internet connections available that could max out the throughput of NAS grade hard drives. So you don't have to go by the top of the end server grade drives here. You don't need SSDs. You can get away with WD Reds or the equivalent from Seagate, assuming this is just going to be for backups. But besides that, that's the main gist. Just go buy a Synology, buy some hard drives, configure it, link it all up, and away you go. There is no additional licensing or anything like that from Synology on top. Truly a one-time purchase and you could get a pretty feature full backup set up for basically a one-time fee of you know however much the unit costs plus hard drives i think when i built my synology and filled it with six terabyte server grade drives i i purchased larger drives that are faster because it was also doing plex uh, i still think that was about a grand so realistically that's in the business world that is pretty cheap considering you don't have ongoing support costs you don't have per user licensing you know just a thousand dollars one-time fee and then in this case if you do the same thing as i did 15 terabytes of storage and a device with a five-year warranty on it and then no extra costs after that so if there is any other questions relating to that leave them in the comment section happy to go through them all um, if you like this i will be doing one for veeam as well because that's my second favorite product if you like the video subscribe hit the notification bell follow us on facebook and twitter at td sheridan lab or at our website at td sheridan lab.com